Fight fans, hello, and welcome back to another episode of UFC's After Show on AfterBuzz TV. My name is Jay Tan, and we're here to talk about UFC on Fox 19, uh, Teixeira versus Evans from Tampa, Florida, which happened, well, which happened yesterday. Uh, anyway, that was Tampa, Florida, live from North Hollywood. It's time to talk fights. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, AfterBuzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin! Hello and welcome once again. It feels like it's been only a few seconds there. There's the kick in. All right, and we are underway here. Once again, as I said, UFC on Fox 19 emanating from Tampa, Florida yesterday. Uh, my name is Jay Tan. I'm on Twitter and all over the internet, jtan716. And my co-host here uh, in the shotgun seat, Gabriel <laughs> Gonzalez. How you guys doing? You can find me on Twitter at double G on TV just to see it below. <laughs> that was good, good Chiron practice. Hey, I know it's right that? there when I see it. You do? <laughs> Very good. All right, man. Uh, of course, I want to bring up uh, folks in the chat room as well. I believe our guy George Hermosa is going to be joining us at some point soon. Uh, through the magic of Skype, and right now, of course, we've also got our chief cornerman, Joe Boza, in the uh, in the chat room. UFC on Fox 18, 19, my friend, Fox 19. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Fox 19. Good card with all the chaos we had getting there. That's a very good point. We'll get into that. A lot of uh, mixing and matching and, and stuff going on Definitely. with uh, with changing matches. Um, headliner was, uh, of course, Glover Teixeira and Rashad Evans. Teixeira winning by first round knockout. I'll run down the uh, results real quickly here, and we'll get into it. Rose Namajunas uh, and Tisha Torres in the co-main event, kind of a women's strawweight potential number one contender fight. Uh, Namajunas walks away with a decision. Habib Nurmagomedov, Nurmagomedov, excuse me, uh, coming back after almost a two-year hiatus with a second-round TKO over debuting Daryl Horcher. Cub Swanson with unanimous decision over Hakran Diaz. Michael Chiesa over Benil Dariush, Raquel Pennington over Betch Cohea, Santiago Ponzinibbio over Court McGree, McGee, Michael Graves over Randy Brown, John Dodson making his return to 135. Uh, this was on the Fight Pass portion, getting a TKO, first round TKO, fastest one of the night, I believe, fastest match over Menvel, Manuel yeah, the Anvil, Gamburian. Gamburian, yep. yep. North Hollywood zone, no less. Yeah. Uh, Cesar Motanch for, uh, Fajera over Oluwalu. Bambose. I love saying that name. I was going to say, good job right there. <laughs> Can I it, buy right? a vowel? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in the opener, Elizu L Zaleski Dos Santos over Omari Akhmedov. Uh, we can talk about that uh, in a little bit, but I think we may have a new potential star with Mr. Zaleski Dos Santos. What do you think of the card overall, man? You know what? The whole card overall, you know, I really like that from the prelims to the main event, it moved along really well. There were a lot mm -hmm. of fast-paced fights. Everyone seemed to really bring it. I think last week, you know, there was a bit of that fatigue. You yeah. know, it was a slower one. But we saw a lot of guys really just step up. We wanted to see guys like Cub in shape. You know, you don't want to see a guy come in slow. And, you know, same with Khabib, you know. And mm -hmm. then the fights that we wanted to deliver, they did deliver. So it was just yeah. a great card top to bottom. This one, I think, set up a lot of really interesting things for us to, to talk about um, going into it. It opens up a lot of weight divisions, yes. I, I should say. You know, Rose Namajunas and Tisha Torres in Definitely. the co-main. Um, very competitive match, a rematch from about two years ago. Uh, Two years, I believe, when they fought in Invicta. Yes. Um, which saw Tisha Torres winning by unanimous decision. So the ladies there are one and one, and it's no surprise, right. I think, when we when we eventually see them uh, go for the rubber match sometime down the road. Definitely. Do you think it will be for the title? It's a good question. I mean, I think that's the, the X factor. Uh, who knows how, yeah. how, obviously, how the future is going to play out. Can Rose be a strawweight champion? Absolutely. I think so. Um, and Tisha, I think, will, will not... Uh, She's well. not going away. She performed... Yeah. Hey, she brought it. Uh, I yeah. got to ask you, how did you score the fight? Did you agree with the judge's decision? Uh, yeah, I did not... Uh, let's, uh, let me take a quick look here. Um, I gave Rose the first two, at least. Uh, third one was close. Um, it was... Uh, my overall impression was it was... Um, 
not as dynamic of a match as their first one, honestly. Right. Um, I had to go back and, and rewatch the first one this morning, but that one was a lot more, uh, had a lot more stuff. It was more varied. There was a lot of ground uh, groundwork by both ladies. Um, Rose was uh, was getting some takedowns, I believe. Um, and this one, for the most part, was mostly all standing. Um, it, I wouldn't say that they were, I, th I think they were respecting each other a lot. They were very uh, cautious to, to pull the trigger, yeah. whereas the Invicta fight, it was the opener of that event. And I just, I know that when you're in that scenario, um, it's easier to just throw caution into the wind and let the, let the hands and feet fly. Um, but I didn't have a problem with, uh, with the result. I thought Rose did enough to get the first two. All rounds were, were close enough. Yeah, it was very competitive. I actually had Tisha win in that one. I think the X Factor was the third round. Um, mm -hmm. That one, I felt like she was hitting, um, she was slowing down Rose with the leg kicks. And I know Rose, she got that takedown that they did discuss it during the, you know, with Joe Rogan and Mike Goldberg that, you know, did she steal the round with it because mm -hmm. maybe the leg kicks, it looked further away for Tisha than maybe it did in person, but I actually had Tisha, she did enough damage to win that third. Rose mm -hmm. definitely took the second, you know, yeah. I think that was her best round. She was keeping Tisha on the end of her strikes. Tisha couldn't really find her range. And mm -hmm. um, I think we're, we're talking about the first fight, you know, that was very early. They were only like two and two at the time, you know, yeah. for both of their careers. So mm -hmm. we saw their maturity, how much they've really grown. I mean, Rose, she was really, she was going for flying arm bars in the first fight, things yeah. like that. This fight, she was really, you know, trying to utilize her range. Her, She's mm -hmm. the one of the longest fighters in that division. Yeah. And then as far as Tisha Torres, I think we've seen how far she's advanced in her striking. She was more technical. She still had that high pace. Mm -hmm. But um, overall, it was a close fight. But actually at Tisha Torres, but definitely, you know, I'm not, it wasn't a beat down. It was right. a close fight. I, we're going to see number three sooner or later. Yeah, yeah. So you must have given Tisha the first and the third then. I thought that Tisha did enough in the... It was really close. That's like my first note on that. Um, yeah. I felt that uh, we saw the left hand that buckled Rose when mm -hmm. they were in the clinch. Mm -hmm. Rose, I feel, would have hit the canvas had they not been in a clinch right, right before. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that may have helped out, her out, but I definitely had Tisha taking the first and the third. But mm -hmm. overall, it was a very close fight. Both of them were trading shots. Mm -hmm. I had a problem because that was actually my fight of the night. I don't know about you. Are you really? Yes. Okay. All right. Let's get into that. That's a very good point. Um, fight of the night was Mr. Zaleski Dos Santos versus Omari Akhmadov. Uh, performance bonuses, Glover Teixeira and Michael Chiesa. I did want to mention that at the top. Um, I agree with you that I don't necessarily agree with, the, with where the money went at the end. Um, for me, uh, I, I did like uh, uh, Dos Santos, uh, Zach. Zaxi, Zaxi Dos Santos. How did that get screwed Good job, man. <laughs> yeah, right. I, so smooth that first time, and then just all went to pot. Um, that pressure. Capoeira is his nickname. I should just go with Capoeira. Uh, Capoeira versus Wolverine. Damn, why didn't I look to those? Um, that was, uh, it was a great fight. For me, though, um, the one that stood out, strangely enough, was uh, Betch Cohea and uh, Rocky Pennington, which was a split decision. Uh, Rocky came out with that one, 29-28, 29-28, and 28-29. Right. Um, what did you think? What was uh, you, you felt like this one just stood out? You know what? Uh, first of all, I've been a fan of Rocky Pennington for a long time. What mm -hmm. I like about that fight is you had two girls that were just going to bring it. It wasn't the most technical matchup, but what I think gives Tisha and Rose the fight of the night is that they're higher up in the rankings and that they fought at the same pace, but it was such a technical matchup. And because of their rankings, there was a lot more drama. There was a lot more on the line. Definitely Rocky and Betcha, they, it was a flat out brawl is what you mm -hmm. want to, that's what gets people to come in and see. That's, that's why you I buy like. a ticket. So they definitely threw down, but I definitely had a uh, Tisha and Rose taking fight of the night just because there was more on the line and they still delivered at the same pace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, I liked Rocky and, and Betch specifically, I think, yes. for that. It was a fun brawl. It, it really was, yeah. Uh, in the chat room here, Soleil Shibi. Uh, Tribby, I hope I'm not butchering your name there, joins in. Um, not quite sure what, uh, what she, is that another relative? I'm gonna, this is gonna be a quiz constantly. Because <laughs> uh, I know that we're constantly gonna have 
Gonzalez family joining in here, <laughs> supporting the boy, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's I, not. Uh, you know what? I actually have a bunch of friends now telling me they're tuning in, so there's a lot more okay. pressure on you to run Very it over there. Nice, <laughs> nice. Well, um, Soleil Trebi, I hope I'm not butchering your name there. He or she, she, I believe. That's a female name, right? Sounds Says, like awesome. It. Join us, uh, and, and Joe Boza as well. Um, I want to read what he's saying here, but uh, join us. Tell us about what you uh, what you think was uh, fight of the night and stood out. Joe Boza here says, I think takedowns won it. For Rose, because according to the fight metric standings, Tisha was almost two and one on strikes. Uh, I agree with Jay. Good work, man. <laughs> Betch relocated to AKA full time after Ronda, and AKA did a good job. It was fun to watch. Speaking though, roundabout way of family, uh, kind of extended after Buzz family joining in there through the magic of Skype, Mr. Horge Horge Germosa. Coming to us. <laughs> I what's up? I man? had to play with it. <laughs> George meet Gabriel. Guys, by the way, this is like After Buzz history here. The first right. time these guys are meeting, and it's through the magic of the internet. <laughs> George, meet your replacement. What's the what's the initiation for this guy? I'm waiting for you to get back, but I'm kind of thinking Kobashi shops. Oh, that. I was gonna go, I was gonna go buy lube. You can go. You all you for on that one, buddy. Can you guys see me? Yeah, I can see. You. Yeah, I can see you very well. I don't know. Uh, I don't know who's uh, broadcasting or. I can't see you. Well, so I guess I just got to keep see it them, PG. But they can see you. There you go. Yeah. The fact is, we can, we it can doesn't see you matter here, who <laughs> can see who. Like how I did that? Okay. What's up, guys? <laughs> What's up? What up, man? So, uh, give us your thoughts on the on the show. You watched it all last night? I, I watched it all. I watched the prelims and the main card. Oh, you don't do that when you're actually on this show. Why? <laughs> what the heck are you doing it now when you're on vacation? I got a lot of time to kill, so yeah. Man. But no, it, it was a good night. It was a good fight from from uh, from top to bottom, it's, especially the main event of the prelims on uh, the fight pass. Mm -hmm. Granted, it was only thirty seven seconds. It, it was a, a fun night of fights. Yeah. Um, anything stand out? We're sitting here talking about um, fight of the night and performance bonuses. Did you did you agree with what they went with, or would you have picked differently? Uh, I would have picked a little different. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I haven't seen the fight that's fight of the night so far. Mm -hmm. I, I did hear it was a back and forth warfare. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, if it wasn't for, from based on the fights that I saw, I probably would go with Rose versus Tisha Torres. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm watching, uh, uh, On the screen, the, you, yeah. have, you have a phone call right Funky there. Funky Skype stuff happening here, but, uh, oh, there's a split screen. Oh, nice. Nice work, Mark. That's looking good, but... But now we can't hear you for anything. You there, boy? Yeah. Okay. Performance bonuses. I, uh, for uh, me, I thought Khabib looked great. Okay. What about John Dodson? We're, John nobody's Dodson. talking about this. 37 seconds. Bunch of left hands and, and, and uppercuts, man. Why, why no love for John Dodson? Did you see how many fights? I'm mean, sorry. Did you see how many punches he threw in those 37 seconds? Yeah, it was like 175,000, right? Exactly. So exactly, how does that not get performance bonus of the night? Have you guys talked about maybe? Uh, I know, I know. Initially, there was a Dan Henderson versus Leonardo Machida. Have you guys talked about that whole thing? What happened with no. Machida? No, we can get into that. Yeah. Obviously, it was one of the matches that didn't happen. Um, that was scheduled. It was a, a yeah. rematch. Yeah. On uh, the point of Dotson, real quick, I think yeah. you may have heard that just Manny Gamburian. He hasn't had the most success, so it, you kind of almost expect Dodson to be able to blow him out of the water because he's, you know, a younger yeah. guy, more athletic. So maybe that hurt him a bit. That's but a stupid criteria. If that was is. the case, it's a stupid criteria. It was a great finish. But if he did it to, let's say, you know, Demetrius Johnson, that would have won every kind of bonus. I think that's maybe yeah, just what took sure. it. Hey, also remember, it was a lot of finishes on that card. Someone has to be the odd man out, and I think it's yeah. just his bad luck. I think 50,000 punches should get you $50,000. <laughs> um, but circling back to, uh, Machida. to Machida and Dan Henderson, um, days before the fight, Machida, uh, I, I guess you saw to flag him. He basically confessed to uh, to taking a banned substance uh, on the USADA banned list, which I believe at the time was not banned. Uh, I think his uh, uh, his story or, or his explanation was that at the time that he was taking it, um, it was not banned and it was recently added. I don't know how valid that is or not. You know what? That's a really tough one for me because he did mention it on his pre-fight forms. Right. So. 
Look, if you know you're doping, you're ob the point is you don't want to get caught. So him stating that, I think that has to be taken into account. Mm -hmm. For me, I got to say, it's really similar to what we saw in tennis recently with Maria Sharapova that, okay, it wasn't busted. There's a lot of drugs. At the end of the day, it's about being a professional athlete. It's part of their job to know. I think the big question for me is, you know, how many people are there between, you know, how he gets whatever uh, supplements and other, you mm -hmm. know, thing, other fuel that he puts into his body, you know, between, you know, his coach and then to himself, whether it's a meal, whether it's in a shake or however he got it. So I think for me, the big thing is that, you know, he's never been caught before, but then there's still no excuse for the fact that he has to know everything that's going into his body. There's just mm -hmm. no two ways around that. There's something to be said for honesty. Absolutely. Um, but that said, if you're just because you're being honest that you're breaking the law doesn't mean that you get a pass for that. You know? Right. Um, so I, I think it was, it's an unfortunate thing that the match had to uh, uh, had to be scrapped. But uh, it, it is for the best. And, you know, if there is if this was just a simple um, innocent mistake, you know, or, or timing where the, the substance actually was added to the banned list by the time that. Uh, Machida, you know, tested yeah. um, or, or filled out the, the medical form, then, you know, it can be rebooked. Yes. Um, ironically, this was also going to be the last fight on Dan Henderson's contract. So Yeah, it's a sticky situation because, remember, Lyoto Machida's coming off a year where he had those back-to-backs. You know, he was finished by both uh, Luke Rockhold and Yoel Romero. So mm -hmm. this was supposed to be, you know, after a long layoff, him finally coming back. Mm -hmm. And like we just said, Dan Henderson, it's his last fight. Um, if you saw his interview with Ariel Helwani after the fact at mm -hmm. where they canceled the fight, he's been very vocal. He is not happy with Leota Machida. Mm -hmm. You know, that's really, you know, Dan Henderson has said, you know, I lost a lot of money on preparation, training yeah, camp. Yeah. This was going to be potentially my last fight. So he had a lot of family and friends coming sure. out. So it made it very difficult for both parties involved. When, when you're on the outside looking in, when you're fans, you hear a headline like this and think, oh, well, you know, we'll just get to the bottom of it, figure it out, and then we'll just book it again. But with fighters, the guys that are in the trenches yes. and in the octagon, they've got stuff going on here. They, they invest time and money in this, so there is definitely more stakes, uh, higher stakes for each of them. So it's understandable, even if there is... As as fans would like to like to think, there's there's honor and respect among certain fighters, you know, or most fighters, and especially mm -hmm. the OG status guys oh, that have yeah. been around during this heyday, like Henderson and, and Machida, who otherwise is is really considered kind of a, a noble stature character. Yeah, he's in, known for like living by the code, and his fellow yeah. competitors really will point to that, and say, you know, right. he is legit about it. But. It's completely understandable that Henderson would be pissed off. Definitely. That, you know, I mean, he was going there for, he needs the paycheck. Well, yeah. Keep, I don't know what needs per se, but yeah. in, in so much as we all need paychecks. All yeah. Right? Keep in and, mind um, also that uh, he, it, this wasn't a guy who pulled out like three weeks before. He said he, he this was fight week. He's already in Florida. He's already mm -hmm. taken the plane trip. He's had his full training camp. He's already begun cutting weight for Friday. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a lot of time, energy, and, you know, he's, mm -hmm. like we said, it's supposed to be his last fight. And yeah. one of the things he's mentioned, he's not even sure if he's going to resign or anything with the UFC or test free agency again. One mm. of the things he did mention, though, he, um, have you seen the news? He said that the UFC is planning to rebook him, UFC 199 in June, against Hector Lombard. So that's going to be... That's right. Yeah, so that's going to be something. But he said going forward... If he does resign with the UFC, he wants something like a retirement kind of package, a retirement role similar to Forrest Griffin, Chuck Liddell, where, you know, even though he's not fighting, he's still on payroll a bit. Oh. He's still got a paycheck coming in. You have to fight. You have to retire first before you can get that package. It's George, true. what's your take on this whole thing? Um, I mean, I, it's so weird because, like, with Lyoto Machida, I think it's kind of unfair for them to say, like, oh, it hurts his legacy. I mean, I mean, he messed up on one fight, you know? Like, I mean, it, it doesn't damage his legacy in any way. Um, you know, so hopefully guys like Machida. And, and is he still training with Anderson Silva? Or? Uh, I know he's at Black House. I haven't heard other way. It's Black, Black House is often – Black House and Anderson Silva is one of those scenarios where often Anderson will uh, – he trains there, but, you know, he'll, he'll return back to Brazil – 
uh, and, and train there occasionally. I believe he's got his own Muay Thai school uh, somewhere yeah. down in the OC as uh, well. As I understand, it's not like a set team, like, say, uh, AKA mm -hmm. or Team Jackson's, right. you know. But the guys who are associated, you know, it's kind of by invitation. They're a close-knit group, but they're not necessarily a full team with a head coach and things like that. Right, yeah, that's yeah. not, uh, it's certainly not the case for, uh, for guys like Machida or Anderson, and, but there's a right. lot of... Uh, and they've both locate. they've relocated to Southern California, so you got to think they probably do overlap training when it they can work it in. Mm. And as far as the Dan Henderson goes, um, I mean, he doesn't exactly have the greatest negotiation um, in, in favor toward him because the guy's only won like two fights in the last two years. Yeah. He's 45 years old. Mm -hmm. So, like, I mean, I'm, I'm sure Bellator will pick him up as obviously we've seen them pick up a lot of guys that yeah. shouldn't be picked up in general. But, I mean, if he wants to resign, great. If not, you know, I, I don't think they're really losing much by, by you know, if, if they don't resign him, you know? What do you prefer, seeing Henderson versus Lombard here in L.A.? Rematch, or uh, Yeah, or... or uh, the other options are um, rescheduling Henderson and Machida, um, although I guess we really have to see what is the punitive, uh, what, yeah, what's the what punishment for, for Machida, what happens. Well, it's gonna, so, or Henderson, safely assume Machida will be, will probably won't be fighting anytime soon, so yeah. the guy wants to fight. I mean, Henderson obviously is one of those guys that just wants to fight, so give him Lombard. I think that's going to be a great fight. And so you think Lombard, uh, as opposed to him going signing with Bellator? Well, I think he, he said he he's still got fight. one more fight, so yeah. how does that work? One more okay. fight on his UFC contract. This was supposed yeah. to be the last one, so he still has one more fight regardless, yeah. whether it's Lombard or someone else. Unless, however, I wouldn't be surprised if um, there's some criteria, uh, questionable mm -hmm. criteria for the fact that he was at fight week. Bout mm -hmm. agreements, oh, I guarantee you, were signed by that point. Um, he showed up. Then again, I don't think he didn't weigh in, obviously. So, And that, a lot of times, is kind of the uh, um, the barometer for whether a match actually is considered executed or not. Yeah. You know? His interview, he said, you know, it, he didn't weigh in, but he also wasn't given any show bonus, any, any kind of thing mm -hmm. like that. He said Dana White did help him a little bit as far as cover training camp expenses, but that's one of the things he said is, like, I didn't make any money, you mm -hmm. know, for all the preparation. Yeah. And um, I want to touch on a point. He said he doesn't want to fight Machida after that. He said, you know what, I don't want yeah. anything to do with that guy after this situation. Fair enough there. Yeah. Uh, let's go back, though, to the matches that did happen. Right. We haven't really touched base, uh, touched on the, the main event. Um, super fast, not a whole lot to talk about. Glover Teixeira getting a knockout in a minute 48 of the first round. Uh, guys, what's your take on this match and specifically, you know, the match itself and what happens next for Glover and Rashad? I think that's really the, the fodder for us to digest here. Well, I'm going to go ahead and throw it to the OG up there on the screen. What do you think, George? <laughs> By the way, um, your chair wait. is very comfortable. I've had a lot of people tell me I look kind of a little better in it than you do. I don't know if you're going to do something <laughs> about that when you come back. This kid, well, Jay's, huh? Jay's the one in my chair, so that's, that's all that matters. Uh, <laughs> keeping it warm for you here. Um, I mean, as far as Teixeira, I've never been really too impressed by Teixeira, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, he has, a, you know, wins over, over a couple guys here and there. But, I mean, especially against John Jones and especially against Phil Davis, he got exposed to me to the point where, like, I don't, I don't want to see him. I think he'd get destroyed by Rumble. I think Cormier would mop the floor with him. I, I think he's one of those guys that, like a Rashad Evans a few years ago, once they lost that high-caliber match like a John Jones that – you know, not really going to see much of him. But like I said, Teixeira, he's going to call out Rumble. They're going to put it together. And like I said, I, I think Rumble knocks him out. You know, I agree. I think that um, he said it so well in the post fight. It's like, we're waiting for the soap opera, John Jones and Daniel right. Cormier to play out. You know, that was supposed to happen. You think Jones and Cormier, if they do fight next, it's probably not going to happen until around late fall, early winter. Mm -hmm. So why MSC, not? It's... November 12th. That's What's true. that? November 12th. Madison MSG. Square Garden. Yeah, that no. I I agree completely. That makes all the sense in the world. Presuming that, well, obviously we're gonna get past uh, we're gonna get past we're this month. Get past OSP. Jones and OSP. It's funny. I was just starting to write a uh, uh, write about this uh, this afternoon for um, Smash Magazine. Um, oh, uh, writing a column. Yeah, it's a small magazine in, in um, Las Vegas, and and talking about this and the triangle. We already have this triangle here. Um, between OSP, Jones, and, uh, and Cormier. Um, I know we're probably going to end up with just going back to Jones-Cormier. 
I think it's a match that everybody wants to see. Um, there's no reason, there's nobody that, that wouldn't want to see it, I think, when you break it down. Obviously, the UFC, uh, Jones fans want to see Jones put Cormier away and, right. and rightfully rest, uh, rest the title from him. Cormier fans also want to see Cormier get his legitimate win over uh, and, and become a, le- a more legitimate champion with a win over Jones. You see, for me, what I struggle so much with that, because I'm with so many of those fans, you know, John Jones, if he is that special, we want to see him show that off. You know, we mm-hmm. want to see history. But at the same time, when I break down, you know, Cormier, how well he's performed against uh, Johnson, against Gustafsson, I watched those fights and I was like, where was that six months ago when you fought John Jones? Mm-hmm. And that's the one hang-up I have, because Cormier, he's really made me a believer. I thought that Jones really exposed him. I didn't mm-hmm. think that Cormier had fought the best competition leading up to his title shot. So now that he's had these title defenses, he's changed my mind, but I still go back, where was all that when you fought John Jones? So I think when we go to the triangle, I take OSP out of it. I see... Rumble Johnson and John Jones, that's a fight we still haven't had. Mm-hmm. That's my X factor. It's kind of like when you brought Holly Holm in to fight Ronda Rousey it's when a lot the like cyborg that plan. Yeah. She, he's that guy who can just scrap everything with one shot. Mm-hmm. I do think that him and Glover, someone's going down. And when you have a fight like that, why wouldn't you want to watch it if you're just killing time? Yeah. Maybe the co main event. You never know. I think especially smart right there because, God forbid, something happens to those guys again. Right. You can at least slot somebody in there and still continue. The, yeah. uh, the, presume it would yeah, be Yeah, you don't want to lose a New York card, a big oh, main event. Jesus, that would. God, God forbid that one. Right. Huh? Rumble, um, Rumble, I think, is always going to be that X factor. Because you look at guys like Alexander Gustafsson and you see what, what guys like Cormier and what Jones did to Alexander Gustafsson. But then you see what Rumble did to Gustafsson. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, it makes sense to, to line these guys up, and it, it, I think it's kind of nice to have Teixeira as a guy that, you know, you can, um, you can market to help build up, uh, help he, he's build no, up Rumble. He's no pushover. Right. So, even, you know, Rumble, yeah, he may win, but he's going to have to connect on a big shot, and it's not like he's just going to walk in there. Mm-hmm. Glover, you're going to have to put that guy away. He yeah. is a tough guy. And we're always going to need new names uh, right. in, in any division. There's, you know, you've got these three guys, Rumble, uh, Cormier, and Jones, and we're, we're doing the three-way dance here. But then there is OSP, there is uh, Glover. You've constantly got to be pushing guys, giving those guys, and uh, it ranks you know, four, five, six, seven, eight, you gotta you gotta give them shots to be able to make them turn them into Cormiers and Rumble exactly. Johnsons. Um, but we're missing a name though that was on the card. I still want to get your opinion, Rashad Evans. What? Uh, where? Where's he at now? What happens? This is his uh, second uh, second match back from a long hiatus. Uh, previously lost to Ryan Bader in, in a pretty one sided uh, one sided match. He didn't look great here either you know for me with Rashad Evans it's tough because his last win was two and a half years ago over Chael Sonnen which quite frankly he should be destroying Chael Sonnen he's bigger you know he's faster more athletic younger all those other factors Mm -hmm. but when you really break it down Rashad when you see him he looks like the same guy he was when he was knocking out Chuck and Forrest Griffin he's still in shape you know as they get older sometimes you'll see guys you know what, you can see he's not the same guy. Rashad, he looks like he's still putting in a full training camp. I think that part of it is the layoff. There's no doubt his skills are a little rusty after so many tweaks and injuries and just time off. But even th- after, between the, the Bader fight to this one? I think what it is now, it's also a little mental for Rashad. You know, mm. when I, you saw him out there, he was I getting think into you're it. you're a little mental. Of course I am. You <laughs> I just know, uh, really you have wanted to, to stick you, that one. I've been waiting on that be joke for a while. You have to be to be this brilliant, Jay. <laughs> Come on now. You could, I know it's only your second show. You're gonna have to learn right now. <laughs> anyway, but I yeah. think what it is, he looked a little too tentative when he was fighting um, Glover. You, he knew he had the speed advantage, but I felt like you know when you saw him fight Machida, even in the fight he lost mixing in feints Mm -hmm. going for some takedowns we didn't see that and that you would think is something he wanted to establish early against a heavy hitter like glover someone you know who he should have fighting off of his back that would have been this was a good fight stylistically for rashad Mm. now 
he was expecting a guy who you expect to be a lot slower than him in Shogun. He hasn't had the best luck either. So I feel like we probably have to see where Rashad is at against a guy at that level to see, you know, if maybe his best days are just behind him. Mm -hmm. George, what's your take on Rashad? Does he... Uh... Does he have more gas in the tank in his career? I honestly, I honestly don't think so. And based on his, his post-fight comments, I don't think he thinks so either. Uh, he, he knows that he's not the same Rashad Evans from 08, from 09. Uh, you know, it, it's been a long time since then. I mean, here is a guy that was consistently, like, in a top two, top three. Now it's like maybe he's not even top ten anymore. Yeah, yeah. Joe Bose is kicking in here and says, I was speechless on how quickly Glover put Rashad away. I thought how good these guys are, we would need the judges. I'm in the same camp with you there, Joe. Um, I, I thought that we were going to see a lot more, and I was really looking forward to seeing Rashad, um, the old Rashad, back. I was hoping he kind of got his got his pace back. When he was on top, he was absolutely one of my favorite guys to watch. Um, he, you know, we first got exposed to him on Ultimate Fighter, um, and uh, he, he went on as really as a, a 205er. To, to win the heavyweight division. He, he was on a tear, you know. Defeated but... Brad Imes in the finals. Um, you know, great, just guy that had uh, had a lot of, uh, a lot of, it had the it factor, you know, a lot of showboating in the, uh, in the cage, and we've seen that all throughout, and I personally love that. I think what you know, was but he would great, always back it up, too. What's great about Rashad, you know, when you think about that time where he came in, he was one of those first guys where we saw, you know, after Chuck Liddell, you know, we saw these heavy hitters. We saw more well-rounded guys. He was that guy, you know, he had fast hands. He had his takedowns. Mm -hmm. And he had that athleticism. I think he was like that, one of those first, you know, really athletic guys who was doing MMA early. And that's what made him so exciting. He wasn't just versatile, but he was quick. He was fast. And he could keep up with all these guys. That's why he was faster than Forrest Griffin guys like that earlier mm -hmm. in his career and that's what made him so much fun to watch yeah true and at some point though that does uh you uh, do lose that in in the fight game you know it's uh, he didn't look slow but i think if you ask rashad he feels a touch slower than he was that maybe he got out of the way of those punches before or maybe he was that much faster to hitting his mark before and i think if you ask him honestly he'd probably tell you that mm-hmm uh, I want to talk, too, also about the... Uh, we have several fighters that came back from a long hiatus. Uh, Habib Nurmagomedov, Cub Swanson, and Bet Kohea. But first, I want to tell you guys real quickly about uh, one of our sponsors here, DraftKings.com, which, of course, you can log on and sign up and do Fantasy MMA. But they are also now starting Fantasy Golf. Um, tournaments are coming up, and apparently you can, uh, apparently tournaments are coming up. I'm not that much of a golf guy, to be quite honest. But um, you can now go on DraftKings.com and play fantasy golf. Um, tournaments happen just, uh, or uh, uh, rather, golf fantasy golf contests happen as tournaments uh, take place. Um, you go on and you pick six golfers uh, in the tournament and before the, thing, uh, the whole thing tees off. Stay under the salary cap, pick up uh, points for uh, streaks per hole performance, tournament finishes. Do you play uh, fantasy baseball or basketball or anything, or MMA for that matter? You know what, I've never gotten into it, but one of the yeah. things I've noticed about DraftKings, you know, they try to make it very user-friendly, accessible. It's adding this new dynamic to the fantasy sports that so many fans, you mm -hmm. know, they get to connect with. Yeah, well, guys, there are prizes to be won on this, uh, on DraftKings. Millions of people are, are on it and winning prizes and stuff like that. Um, for us specifically, though, when you, if you hear about this and you decide to go forward with it, uh, use the co promo code BUZZ. You sign up for free there and use the word BUZZ. And uh, I guess we don't really, they don't really give you anything for free bonus to that. But <laughs> use the word BUZZ there. Um, you can uh, possibly uh, win, win big there. Um, DraftKings... Only DraftKings brings the, the excitement of golf to this level, and that is a very true statement. So are we going to be golf. playing next week is my question. Hell no. <laughs> what, you know, uh, you seem like one of those guys who would have, like, Jordan Spieth on your team. Who's you know, that? You, that guy who was supposed to win the Masters, like, a week ago, and he had that epic upset that, uh, according to golf people, it's like the equivalent of when um, Russell Wilson threw the ball that got caught by the Patriots and cost them the Super Bowl. They said... His breakdown was that kind of epic for golf fans. If you 
follow the sport. The only hole in one that I know is chugging a beer. Shotgunning. I, I really thought you were going <laughs> to say like at the miniature golf course under the windmill. I thought that's what you were about to say. If I'm at the miniature golf course, chances are I'm at the video game, uh, the arcade area. <laughs> well, anyway, though, let's uh, get back. Hey, George, you play golf? I do. You do? Yeah. All right. Well, so who's on your team? DraftKings.com, <laughs> promo code buzz. Although I do like, I do like playing. Um, I didn't play yesterday, but I do like playing DraftKings MMA. Oh. Yeah, you, oh, you didn't play the uh, the event. How are you uh, with your right now, uh, with you like your your pot or your uh, your okay. account? I started whatever. with like twenty five. I think I got like forty bucks right now. Okay, how does that work between paying? You just it's just dollar for dollar points and dollars. No, it's like you 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 enter like a like a pool mm -hmm. so like you enter, like it's like it's different if different different have different um entrance fees mm -hmm. so like three bucks here ten bucks here obviously the the more you put in the higher the pot's gonna be mm -hmm. and then you pick five fighters and it's like a combination of like knockdown submissions punches like whoever has the most points like yeah the top the top x amount win so in other words they translate the stats for the fight game the way they translate things like points rebounds yeah you yep. know things like that for basketball or football yeah. you know depending you know so if you would have picked khabib you probably would have got a lot of points hmm that makes sense if i wasn't actually sitting here writing these really stupid ridiculous notes that you see me complain about to myself every week i might play DraftKings fantasy mma you know a hey, uh, why you got a lie to the fans? I know half of those are just your grocery list. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Twitter is for. No, the grocery list is on Twitter, if you guys are that interested. Also, where I park. Great functions for Twitter. Um, this, it's not that I can read it afterwards. Look, getting back to the show, though, yeah. again, we saw three guys, uh, two guys, and one lady come off rather long hiatuses. Habib Nurmagomedov, almost two years. Cub Swanson, a year, almost to the date. His last fight, I believe, was the... Uh, 18th of April last year, yeah. and uh, Betch Cohea coming off of a, a pretty long hiatus, a little over six, I think it was like seven or eight months. Yeah, her last fight was August the, against Ronda Rousey. It's yeah, been it's a, August almost first, a year. August. Yeah. Yeah. August. August. There we go. Um, I guess what I want to ask is who, what, what do you think of all three? How did they look coming back? Who looked the best? Who uh, did anybody, any of them strike you as having some, some cage rust per se? That's a really tough question because they were all in good fights. I think that um, I'd say Cub Swanson, you know, he would be number three on my list just because, you know what, he looked like he took a little longer to get into his rhythm. I actually thought he lost the first round against Diaz. Mm -hmm. um, Becha Cohea, she looked great in a brawl. I think stylistically that was just one. It was going to be close, you know, no matter what, just going into Betcha style and Rocky. Mm -hmm. I think the one that looked the best was Khabib. You know, if you expected him to be a little slower, he didn't really look like it. You know, he was hidden. He was finding his mark. He obviously dominated on the ground. Um, credit to Daryl Horcher. You know, a lot of people sure. thought that, especially when he got the mount and uh, the crucifix, was that in the first or the second? I, I want to say second. The second, yeah, it, people thought, I thought he was just going to fold, but he made it to the second round, so credit to him. You know, we're going to be seeing him down the line, you know, with another fight to get, you know, mm -hmm. the, that credit from the UFC, you know, he's going to get his chance. But I thought Khabib, you know, for a guy who you were worried he was going to be slower, he came in shape. George? Um, if I have to pick one that impressed me the most, I'd go with Cub Swanson, just based on the level of, of competition like mm -hmm. we all expected Khabib to win yeah uh, a lot of us just probably expected Betch to win I actually not really a fan of her anymore after like you can't you can't get knocked out by somebody and still talk smack like come on really Betch you're a pro wrestling uh, fan of course you can that's the whole point of it dude <laughs> yeah no but but I do I do think that Cubs wants especially because uh watching that fight I thought that I I had Hakran Diaz winning uh not winning that fight but or I I, I would have predicted him to win I think Hakran Diaz is mm -hmm. a pretty impressive guy. He's a guy who's, you know, has, has a pretty pretty good record aside from a couple of losses, you know, against uh, Ricardo Lamas and Nick Lentz. Like he's a guy that, mm -hmm. you know, submission specialist in some in any ways. So I'm I'm happy to see Cub Swanson come back. And obviously he's a SoCal guy, as you can tell on the chest tattoo. Um, <laughs> right. You know, Khabib obviously he he looked amazing. I would have loved to see him against Tony Ferguson, of course. I'm sure that would have been a fun fight to watch, but. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think those who look good. I really want to see what Khabib does next. 
Yeah, it is interesting to think you know we've got two winners and uh, Betch uh, did not win. She came out the loser in the match, um, but by split decision, very she, close. She, it's not like her spot in the UFC isn't in jeopardy after that fight. Right. I think the biggest thing had she just gotten blown out by Rocky, I think then maybe people would be like. Well, you talked your way into a title shot. No, she stands there. She holds her ground, win or lose. You know, I agree with George. I think, you know, I think you have to take your loss for a while. You have to know to say what, uh, something else if you want to work your way back in. Because otherwise, you just, she looks like she's lost her marbles when she's saying, oh, I totally would have killed Rhonda. No. Well, look, it wasn't I mean, going to happen. Be that as it as it may, whatever with the uh, with the outcome of Ronda and Betch and how she handled herself, um, she she fought pretty admir- admirably. It was a great scrap she did. Uh, on this show, and you know it, it's two losses, one of which to Ronda. Um, you know it made I think that match made sense at the time. Ronda and Betch, there was uh, uh, a lot of a lot of decent reasons financially True. to to do that. You know it's one of the rare times that you got a. Uh, um, You've got that kind of four horsewomen storyline with with Ronda, and you know, I mean, the the match, the the performance of the match speaks for itself, financially it's speaking. So, um, I agree. I don't think she's going anywhere. Uh, it's good to see her back. Um, how soon, George? Do you think before uh, Cub uh, we start talking about Cub in the top ten or so? Not anytime soon. No. I mean, I, I think that what this was featherweight, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, I mean there's so much going on in that feather the featherweight division, uh, in more ways than one. That and not yeah, anytime right. soon. Uh, I, I actually believe it or here. not, I want to. Cubby, test- you know what? I I take it back. Cubs, he, they have him listed here uh, as number six. So the both of us should sit corrected. Um, well, I mean, I, I thought you meant like more of like the top echelon. Like I I don't see him getting a title shot in the next year, or right. with, with the way it's going, probably no one else is going to get a title shot. You know, but we're talking about I mean Max Holloway, Ricardo Lamas, Chad Mendes, uh-huh. um, and then Jose and and Frankie. Right. I mean, it's uh, he's faced Ricardo already. Uh, I forgot. I think he. Uh, I think Holloway defeated him. Correct? Yeah, Holloway was his last yeah. loss. I think Did before he, his layoff. He lost to Lamas as well. Uh, no, I don't think he's fought Lamas. That oh, was what I was going to say. I feel like because we have already seen him pretty much against everyone else, mm-hmm. I think it would be a good gauge to see how he does against the Lamas or maybe a Chad Mendez if we're trying to figure out where mm-hmm. Mendez is at in that division. I yeah. think that would be a good test. I, I can see them giving... I mean, Diaz was listed as number 10. Um, maybe one other one other match with somebody ranked below him, but I think before too long... You start uh, you start booking those matches again, you know. If, yeah. if you really want to start, te- so if you really want to test Cub Swanson, you book him against the loser of Aldo Frank Ed- Frankie Edgar. Sure, yeah, that's a, that's an interesting one. I, I'm down to see I that. I think my only thing about that is Frankie. If Frankie Edgar does come out the loser, I feel like we saw five rounds of that already. Mm-hmm. Now the Jose Aldo. You know, since he did lose that one in eight seconds, that could be a fun one to do over again because you really don't know how their styles would have matched up in that fight. My well, qu- okay, you go goddamn, we had better. Oh, it's mini it's rant MMA. here. Mini rant here. We had better see Conor McGregor defending his featherweight title after July. Don't even get me started on that. I'm, I'm so going to get you started that. on that, George, and I'm probably going to say a lot of it. I mean... To, to go up two weight classes and to run this whole thing back with with Nate Diaz, financially, I get that it makes sense, but, you know, the, the bottlenecking of the indis, uh, of the, the, weight, the weight class, the division, for the sake of one guy, it opens up a bad Pandora's box, even if right now, presumably, the UFC and Conor McGregor are playing nice, um, and it makes sense for them. My issue, you know, it, it, when you look unfair. at it, it is when you look at it. What I see the issue with McGregor is it starts to make it a little bit like boxing. When you have boxing, you know who are the big names of the last few years: Pacquiao, Mayweather. Mm-hmm. People don't even know exactly what title they're fighting for. You know they're a champ, mm-hmm. and you know they're the one you're gonna see. But it waters down the value of guys, you know, like Rafael Dos Anjos, like, let's say, Jose Aldo wins, you mm-hmm. know, hypothetically. You know, the, there's this no value in saying. it. Yeah, there's yeah. no value in it because it's like, well, when is he going to fight Connor? It's like, 
you and, know, and it the, messes with that dichotomy of the division. The 145 title becomes less meaningful also because just like DC is having to deal with the kind of the, the John earmark. Jones well, you never beat John Jones. Yeah. Well, you never beat Connor. And God forbid Connor McGregor just uh, relinquishes the title and moves on uh, to 55 or 70. I get it in terms of fighting at a comfortable weight, but. Dude, you got to give us at least one title offense at 45. You know, it's that's just only right and proper. So I hope we see that before the end of uh, end of the year. Like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that Nate Diaz somehow, like, I don't know, something happens where like that fight doesn't happen because I still haven't met anybody that mm. wants to see that fight again. Right. Like, I don't want to see that. Fight. I don't care for that fight. I mean, like I said, I know it never it would never happen. But the only time that that fight would make sense if it's at 145. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the, I but, mean, it's but it's no, not going to happen. It's, that's it's not going to one seventy. Yeah, but if if Nate falls out, I mean, we're in mid April right now. If Nate falls out, Connor is not going to end up f- defending this title at uh, y- at, at forty five for UFC two hundred. He's going to end up. Uh, he's going to end. Up, they're going to find another seventy pounder. Yes. Well, you know what? I think no. He'd fight someone else, but it's not going to be for the title. It would be at a catch weight. Because you think about it, he's bulking up right now. Let's say the fight falls out early June. Mm. Suddenly you got the issue of, well, he's been putting on all that weight. He is not about to cut down to 145 when yeah. he's probably weighing about 170. Let's say he's trying to get to 175, so he is as big as he can be for a cut to 170. He's going to fight one of the other guys, Aldo or Frankie, at a catch weight. And, you know, well, that's not going to Okay, because he's if you're not Aldo or Frankie. Then let's say Nate falls out of the picture and McGregor needs a fight, and you're Aldo or Frankie. Do you keep this interim title match against each other, or do you prefer to fight McGregor in a non-title at a higher catchweight, like a 55 or 60? You know, what do you guys think? That's a great question. I'd say I'd say they want to keep Stumped the down. interim title championship just for the sake of like. Because I mean, that's the thing about interim championship is that yes, there's like a like 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 I was said the dichotomy dichotomy of the situation, but you never know what can happen where it's like, oh, we're gonna drop the interim title off of you, or we're gonna drop the the name interim. Yeah. We saw it with 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 Henan Barrow. We saw it yeah. with uh, I think one other person. I can't think of who. I, can, I don't remember either. Yeah, the only I can, one I can think of that's actually unless they won the undisputed later was Henan Barrow that Dominic Cruz was out so long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I will say this, you know, if Conor McGregor does win at 170, because also Rafael Dos Anjos, is, they've announced it, he's fighting that week against Eddie Alvarez defending mm-hmm. his title. If he just chooses to go in on it, I have a... Who chooses to go in on what? Uh, um, Conor, if he beats Diaz, right. I can see him saying, you know what, I don't even care about 45, give me Dos Anjos. Yeah. And UFC says, you know what, Aldo and Frankie... They're promoted to undisputed champion, right? It, just because you know what Connor's doing his thing, and people would pay to, see, they'll pay the same amount of money to see him fight Dos Anjos at one fifty five, you know, just as much as they would pay to see him defend his title at one forty five. I think, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we. We've if seen we, them do whatever Connor wants to do, so if that's what he wants to do, that's what they're going to give him. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I, uh, I, I was going to say that I think that we probably have seen the last of Connor at forty five, although. By all rights, he should go down and, and defend once, but I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up fighting uh, if he, uh, fighting RDA for the title. If he beats Diaz, I think not. If he loses, I have a hard time not seeing him have to do it, just well, oh, financially. Yeah, no, uh, agreed, yeah. Uh, Joe Boza here is saying, Connor is so scared of Frankie and Ho- Jose and Max Holloway. This is so BS. The fact that Frankie and Jose are fighting on the same card as Connor well, he's, is he's crap. He's beat for those guys, <laughs> so oh, it's kind of yeah. hard to believe that he's scared. Yeah, I uh, I don't uh, I'm not seeing that with uh, I, I'm not seeing any, any fight when you're at this level. I don't really think that anybody is is sca- scared per se of somebody. I don't think it's fear. He does know stylistically. Frankie Edgar is a high risk, low reward. I will say that you know just Frankie's mm-hmm. style. He poses a lot of problems to Connor, and Connor does get a big payday, probably bigger fighting a guy like Diaz than he would a defense against Frankie. Mm-hmm. We only got a few minutes left, and George will have to let you go. So real quick, one last question for you. Uh, talk to us about your thoughts on UFC 200 fantasy matchmaker booking, and then we're going to have to cut you loose. Uh, UFC 200? I'm sorry, not 200. I'm, 205. 205, 205 UFC Madison New Square York. Garden. Oh, 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 okay, so 
you have to have Jones, so it's probably going to be Jones Cormier. Mm-hmm. I know that Edgar wants to fight, so I'm sure it's going to be him, maybe McGregor, hopefully. Um, Ronda, Ronda Rousey is going to come back, so it's going to be her against the winner of Nunez and Tate. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I mean, you can't do too many title shit, title title matches on it, but yeah, those three. I mean, I wouldn't. I mean, maybe Weidman, but I I see Rockhold winning, so maybe Weidman will fight on the card. Maybe him against maybe Bisbing. Mm-hmm. So well, yeah, that, those are my three or uh, four fights for UFC 205. I like it. Yeah. I'm, I'm on board with that. I agree. You know, it's going to come down to timing. And if Cormier, I think UFC is going to make Cormier fight Jones at two, uh, 205 He's in New York. make him. He wants to do it. He has said he doesn't <laughs> think that Jones deserves to get the home court advantage yeah, for a fight. That was a while I, ago. You know, I think if Jones wins, he's... Cormier loses that leverage, but I agree that Weidman most likely, win or lose, he's probably going to end up on that card. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, we've got a whole lot of great matches to look forward to between now and, uh, and July, yeah. and then also, of course, November as well. Yeah. And uh, next week, Jones OSP. That happening as well. Thanks to Joe Boza in the chat room, of course, Horge Jermoza joining us, Soleil Tribi. Again, I hope I got that name right. Is that uh, someone you know? Is that your family? Not one of my people, no. <laughs> I, I got no idea. GG, real quick, tell them where they can find you online. Yeah, all right, guys. You can find me at Double G on TV, just to see it below. JTAN716, all over your internet, and uh, that's all I got. Get out of here. Tired of looking at you. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 